Hey guys, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, how to make a knife from one of these, a crappy old file. So, when I first started making knives, I didn't have much of a shop, I didn't have many tools, and I certainly had no idea how to make knives. I was totally starting from ground zero. So that's what this video is about. If you're interested in making knives, but you don't really know anything about how to do it and you don't have a lot of expensive equipment, well, how do you go about learning those first building blocks about making a knife? That's what this video is going to be about. All right, guys, let's get to it. This first video in our series of knife making projects is designed to introduce you to knife making at its simplest and cheapest. No fancy tools, no expensive materials. The main thing it'll cost you is a lot of labor. You'll learn a little about steel, a little about heat treating, and a little about knife design. And when you're done, you'll have a knife that'll last you a lifetime. The knife we're going to make is what's called a hidden tang knife, also known as a stub tang. A knife blade consists of two main parts, the blade itself and the tang, which is the piece that extends into the handle. In this case, the handle will be made from wood. Okay, before we begin, let's talk about the tools and materials you'll need for this project. In some of our advanced projects, these might be pretty extensive, but this one's designed to be dead simple. So to start with, you'll need two metal files, preferably double cut bastard files about 10 inches in length. One of them should be in good working condition, while the other can be old, rusty, and worn out, the kind of thing you'd find at a flea market. We'll also use a rasp, which is basically a file made for woodworking. You'll also need a hacksaw, a bench vise, an assortment of wet or dry sandpaper, some charcoal, a grill, two-part epoxy, and a small woodworking chisel. The only power tool you'll use will be a drill or a drill press, and you can get around that if you want to. The materials required for the project will include the crummy old file we already mentioned. That file will actually become the blade of your knife. Additionally, you'll need a piece of wood about 5 inches long and an inch or so thick, and a short piece of 1 8 inch brass rod. And that's pretty much it. Assuming you already have a bench vise and a drill, then you should be able to do this project for 20 or 30 bucks. Alright, let's get started. As we've mentioned, this blade will be made from a scrap file. Files rust and get worn out, but the steel they're made from is generally high quality carbon steel which can easily be heat treated to form a very hard blade. But before we do anything with the blade, we'll need to do something to the steel called annealing. Annealing is a heat treating process which causes the steel to soften so that it can be relatively easily cut, ground, or machined. Carbon steel is annealed by heating it to about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit and then slowly cooling to room temperature. In industry, this is done with fancy furnaces that keep very exact temperatures. But you and I can do something very similar, but way simpler, that will still do the trick. For the purposes of illustration, I've made a small fire pit, but you can just do this with your backyard grill. Just set a pile of charcoal on fire and heat the knife until it glows red. Blasting the fire with a hair dryer will cause it to heat hotter. But if you build the fire big enough, you can get enough heat without the hair dryer. Try to get the entire blade up to a full red heat. You may have to move it around a little. Once it turns red, jam the blade into a bucket of sand. Make sure it goes straight into the sand and doesn't cool in the air. Leave it there for an hour or two, then pull it out. It should now be soft enough that you can cut it with a hacksaw. If not, then you'll have to try again or you'll destroy every tool that you try to cut or file with it. Okay, now put the old file aside. 
I'll begin the project in earnest by drawing the design for the knife. If you aren't comfortable designing a knife freehand, hey, just trace the pattern of a small blade that you like. Then we'll draw a short tang. For your reference, this blade is a hair over three inches long with a 2.5 inch tang, but you can do it however looks good to you. The dimensions are not that critical. Next, we'll cut out the pattern with a pair of scissors and trace out the design on the scrap file with a Sharpie. Once I've laid out the pattern, I'll secure the blade in my vise and cut away as much of the excess steel as possible using a hacksaw. The more I cut, the less I'll have to file. Once I've gotten pretty close to my lines, I'll switch over to my nice sharp new file and start filing right to all the lines. Okay, so let's take a break here and talk about files. Files are one of the single most important tools a knife maker will ever buy. Don't cheap out on them. A high quality brand name file like a Nicholson is worth every nickel. For this project, you'll want a double cut bastard file, which is designed for rapid stock removal. We'll hold the handle in one end and brace the other end under our off hand. Then just work your way methodically around the various lines you've drawn for the knife. If you keep going as a knife maker, you'll eventually get a belt grinder that will accomplish this task in about 10% of the time. But still, it's amazing how much steel you can file away if you really get your back into it. We'll clean up the tang with the file. The tang is this part, the stub that goes into the handle. So we secure the blade in the vise and start filing. By the way, you'll notice that we're not doing anything to remove the bumps from the file. There'll be a neat little design element of the knife. You'll see how that works out later. And we're filing. And we're filing. And we're filing. The width of the tang is not so important. What's important is that we want the section where the blade meets the tang to be dead square and symmetrical from side to side of the blade. If not, you'll have ugly gaps between the blade and the handle. And we're filing. And we're filing. And there we have it. This is what we call a blade blank. It's shaped like a blade, but it has no bevels. There's no sharpness there. Okay, so what we'll be doing next is turning our blank from a flat hunk of steel into a knife. We'll do that by filing the bevels into the blank. Okay, now that we've got the tang nice and squared up, we'll move on to the blade. Again, we'll secure it in the vise. Now we'll just start whaling away again with the file. So let's talk about some important principles of knife making. It's really important that the blade be symmetrical. In other words, that both sides of the blade slope exactly the same down toward the edge. If we don't, it'll cut badly and look even worse. Notice how the bevels work. They stop before they hit the tang. This little section here where it stops is called the ricasso. It gives you a little bit of blade to grip or to index off of and makes the blade easier to sharpen. There are lots of fancy ways of doing ricassos, but here we're just going to let the file do the work and give us a nice clean square line where the ricasso and blade meet. Again, symmetry is king. The ricasso should be the exact same width on both sides of the blade. Okay, this is very boring, labor-intensive work, but say la vie. Just keep working away, concentrating on keeping those bevels nice and flat. The other thing you want to do is make sure that the bevels are symmetrical from side to side. Here's the way this works. If the angle of the bevel is exactly the same on both sides of the blade, you should get a bevel that reaches the spine in exactly the same place. If you goof up, the bevel might reach the spine up near the tip on one side and down near the tang on the other. 
this will look really amateurish. The good news is that you're going very slowly. So if one side's not meeting the spine at the same place as the other, you just keep adjusting until you're nice and equal on both sides. Once we get everything symmetrical, the bevel's nice and flat and a consistent edge, then we're done with all the filing. Thank God you can stop kicking the dog now. The hard part's over. See what I meant earlier about how cool all these little ridges and bumps from the file look now that we beveled it? Alright, now we're ready for heat treating. So, what exactly does heat treating mean? Alright, so we've got our blade shaped, but that does not mean it's a knife. So what next? Well, we just posed the question of what is heat treating? We'll find out in part two of this three-part series. Well, that's it, guys. Hope you learned something. Uh, as we go forward, I'm going to be making a series of videos uh, that are going to address increasingly more complex and interesting parts of knife making. This one was starting from ground zero and we're going to kind of slowly climb the ladder and accumulate new skills so that eventually you'll know darn near everything you need to know to be a skilled knife maker. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrell's Blades, and check out my website, waltersorrellsblades.com, where you'll find examples of my knives and lots of instructional videos that you can't find here on YouTube. <laughs>